Hey y'all, welcome to the fire, y'all. Stay with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about Orionus and Pleiades. Okay. Come on, Gizzle. Right. We're coming from the Keys of Enoch, called the Book of Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason for this video at this time is the eclipse and its relationship to Pleiades or Kimmel. Sure, we're being made aware of the eclipse on April the 8th, but when you look at April the 9th and April the 10th, you start to see a convergence of the moon and Pleiades. And like we mentioned in our previous videos, this is one time of the year when we can shoot for the moon. And even if we miss, we could be amongst the stars. Well, that happens to be the first day of the first month on the sacred calendar. And that reminds me, much of the information in this video was gathered using the Celestial Clock Calendar. Well, I would suggest you go over to coachingafight.shop and get yours today. That's coachingafight.shop. All right. So what we want to do in this class is look at key number 105 from the Keys of Enoch. We've already looked at key one through three and 104. Mm -hmm. So now for 105, the key to our astrophysical time zones is the 3 and 1 alignment of consciousness forces in the Great Pyramid with the 12 and 1 energies of time warp pyramids, centered and controlled by the many and one throne energies of Orionis and Pleiades. Kermit and Kism. Now notice it says throne energies. Right. So these will be associated with the thrones that we hear about in the Bible. And then notice up there that is talking about the alignment of the consciousness. Mm -hmm. right. That would be Third Testament kind of stuff where we're talking about the hour of the consciousness. And what we're learning here is that this is all related to star alignments and timing in our history. In other words, our father does things in an orderly fashion. Mm -hmm. Well, he also does things in a timely fashion. Right. All right, so let's step through these verses here, if you don't mind. I'm, we can take turns reading, if you will. This is key 105 from the Keys of Enoch. This key is speaking directly of consciousness programming. It is telling us that consciousness programming is connected with the Great Pyramid, which is referred to in the mystical scriptures of an ancient Near East as the foundation stone. The consciousness programming, in other words, how humanity would wake up all at one time. Mm -hmm. It's associated with the Great Pyramid. That's kind of like the time clock we're gonna learn here. The consciousness forces of the Great Pyramid are cued with specific star points which are working with planetarium time war areas. So again, it's talking about a, the grid pattern. Mm -hmm. And what we can see if we were to map out the book of Enoch, the first book written, when you map out what he says, you can almost see the star alignment, mm -hmm. especially from what Chris and I have done so far and what Stacey have added. We would only really have to start understanding the Maseroff, right? specific star points, which are working with planetary star warp areas. Well, this particular chart doesn't have the planets on it at all right they aren't even taken into account are they mentioned in that part of enoch i don't, I don't no, see the, them no the planets are not and that's why they're not included in order to understand what time warp areas represent we have to understand the time warp fields as a type of energy pyramid energy pyramid and the reason why he says that is because we can see energy flow and so we can understand energy you know as it flows through patterns and such without actually being a thing there you know like if you try to hit it with a bat you're trying mm -hmm. to hit lightning or something like that number four first we must look at the geophysical time warps of the earth with this meridian drawn according to the tropic of cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. We note that these areas of the Earth's magnetic field, as well as the solar flares caused by the sun's celestial movement, meet at certain energy points or vortices. 
So this is the celestial clock calendar. So Cancer being the crab, right? Right. And Capricorn being the goat. Okay, so the thing about it, the stars align on those particular days are on Hanukkah and Pentecost. Mm -hmm. First, we must look at the geophysical time warps of the Earth with its meridians drawn according to the Tropic of Cancer. And the okay, so we already have that. <laughs> Praise our Father in Heaven, Enoch told us that um, in um, his book of the Revolutions of the Luminaries of Heaven. Right. So we know that these areas of the Earth's magnetic field, as well as the solar flares caused by the sun's celestial movements, meet at certain energy point or vortices. So, okay. So they're aligned at those particular times. Um, look back at it, Chris. Now zoom out. So we can see the times that it's actually talking about. It's those aligned with, uh, like we said, Hanukkah and uh, Pentecost. But the top being... <laughs> what we will call December mm -hmm. um, and then June being down at the bottom so the year's kind of split in half that way mm. so what he's saying to me all right let's look at the next verse what is not shown on mapping of the vortex jaw of time warp zones is their connection with the stars and the ancient astrophysical stations of light upon the earth so we can't see the connections I understand that. Let's go on to verse <laughs> <laughs> And if we consider that the star fields as given some mapping of where the Earth's biosphere as watery prism stands in relationship to given star fields, we will understand why the ancient Egyptian text referred to Ishkem as why the Great Pyramid was aligned with Mentaka, Delta, Alimam, Epsilon and Alnitak, Zeta, and Tak Orion, Orionis. These are the central threshold controls for the region of positive programming used by the Elohim Lords of Light to connect the many galaxies to our Father Universe within our galactic quadrant. These threshold controls are necessary in coordinating celestial navigation between universes. Through the energies of your Orion, the central threshold control, the higher beings of light move across the waters of the deep. Okay, what he's saying is, if you can understand this all as a prism of water, kind of like, you know, there's all, you had all of these planets and stars all for it floating in water. So it's saying that if we can understand how the star fields are ordered, then we can understand this analogy that it's making? Well, you have to use the analogy to understand the star fields. And if you can understand how this is, you know, all working together, it says you'll start to understand that these are the central threshold controls of the reason of positive programming used by the Elohim laws of light to connect the many galaxies to our father universe. So you want to think of it. Lastly, he said of a watery prism. But then instead of H2O, this what's flowing is electrons. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you understand because it, unlike uh, water, electrons will have a pattern to them. Right. Well, this pattern is what he's saying, this, this way of connecting through this crystalline, we'll find in a, in a later chapter, this crystalline kind of structure is what he's using to communicate with us. In, order work. in other words, he's bouncing his will for lack of a better word off of the stars hmm. in order to get to us in other words he's using the stars like like trying to shine a shine a spot with a laser using mirrors or relays yeah hmm. mirrors is better yeah mirrors because it's it, it, it when you start to look at it real close it starts to look like reflections you know, especially when you start to look at the Sabbath day related and how close it follows. It doesn't follow the moon, but how close it follows to the moon. It's like, you know, those times are when the sun, moon, and the star relationships are in such a way that we would get a direct hit. Like it would bounce off and hit us at 90 degrees. Right. Or a direct hit during the full moon and the new moon. So does that mean that during certain times... 
you are able to receive more so from the Father than at other times. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. The gates are open during those certain times, like we said on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. But then on a yearly deal, it's more aligned with the stars. The stars are what's lining it up. The stars are what's lining up. And then you'd have these yearly gates that would open. And of course, those are during feast days. Mm -hmm. um, Passover, Tabernacles. Pentecost, Hanukkah, yeah, and the others. It it makes me think about how no one group or no one person can say, well, um, the Father only s speaks to me when He's speaking to us all, because these um, energies are constantly bouncing back and forth. So all of us have the opportunity, that's what I was going to say, all of us have the opportunity to receive from him, um, but we also have to be aligned correctly, right? We have in order to be to doing receive. what we're yeah. supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the feast days come into play. And that's why throughout history, it's been up to the men, primarily because everybody else was not required to go to the feast days mm, the women yes. didn't have to go the children didn't have to go but it would have been like you say everybody has the same opportunity so those women those children those old men who decided to go would have gotten enlightenment and got the same benefits everybody else but those who decided to stay home would have missed out yeah because they were able to get more of this you know, I don't know what you would call it. What the Shekinah glory that yeah, the, oh, the Father, know, yeah, and the then time. they would get it and take it back to their families. Yeah, yeah, you know the information, the knowledge, and all of that, and so um, yeah. Therefore, the people, like you said, that were left behind, one that was not able to make the uh, journey, could also receive something from. From the the head of the family, from yeah. the from the father, from the um, the men that, that actually made the trip. Right yeah. That actually went. Well, the difference in the time that we're going to now, and it should be noted that everybody's going to the feast now, even right. the children. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the third testament says that the children will be prophesying. Right. It's because they will be getting some of the same thing that we're talking about that we've received. Um, during these periods of time. All right, let's go on to verse 7. We must also understand the Pleiades cluster as one of the key centers for the propagation of light. The Pleiades is the constellation Taurus. It's not to be thought of as a separate threshold control for the measurement of planetary systems, but according to Enoch, the Pleiades is a measurement for all key time clocks. All astrophysical temples of measurement, these time clocks on the earth are located on magnetic grids and focus into the Great Pyramid. Now, see, Chris, this is why I wanted to bring you in on here. Because it's talking about how Kimmel is the measurement for all key time clocks, all astrophysical temples of measurement. So... In the next chapter 106, which if we make it through all of this in this video, we'll cover it in another video. It also covers Kimmel and Kizu, uh, Pleiades, and Orion. But let's go on to verse 8, see if we can learn more about these time clocks and how this is the, the measurement for all key time clocks. We see that the Earth is controlled by great geomagnetic energy spokes, and that each energy spoke has within it 12 energy spokes, all interconnected at certain parts of the Earth's star field. Okay, now scroll over, he's, uh, he's showing us a picture here, and this may be what he's, what he's saying. It's one beneath it too. We see that the Earth is connected by great geomagnetic energy spokes, and that each energy spoke has within it 12 energy spokes, all interconnected at certain parts of the Earth's star field. 
Invisible lines of the force establish a systematic pattern for the formation of the particles of matter and antimatter in the programming and control of individual intelligence. You see anything like that in there? I see the lines. I don't see where the antimatter is coming from. The antimatter we learn in another part of the book is what is used to create third world creations. You have a world that goes through its maturity and once it implodes on itself and is destroyed, all the beings on a planet that's ready to go to the higher level will do so. But those that are not will become antimatter. Hmm. Dark matter in space. Mm -hmm. This dark matter becomes what we know as a dark, as a black hole. And this right. black hole, of course, absorbs everything around it until it gets enough matter within itself to create another universe. And another universe is created in that singularity. And then it takes our creator to come in and explode that singularity in what we know as the Big Bang. And then another universe similar to ours, almost identical. Is born. It's born. So, no, you don't see any dark matter in here. So, let's go on. Let's look at the next verse. All that comes out of this book, by the way, this is um, the book of knowledge, the keys of Enoch. We're in key number 105. The main lattice formed by these lines of force consists of 30 minutes of arc divisible into 16 grid areas, measuring 7.5 minutes of arc by six minutes of arc, or 45 square nautical mile units. Now this is why a lot of people don't read this book, is because it's on a scientific level too. If you wanted to dig deep into this, you can probably write a thesis on this verse. We're not, let's go on to verse 11. <laughs> Each one of the 12 main lattice areas is controlled by a high frequency geophysical pyramid. What appears as the physical structure of these time warp areas exists in reality as a twin force of matter and antimatter, which creates mirror-like image, which can be used to alter physical reality to a much higher reality of universal intelligence. Okay, so what this is talking is on a fifth dimensional level and how you have these energies. He's trying to make them, un, trying to make us understand them as energies, but they're fifth dimensional energies. So we don't can't really wrap our minds around that. But what he's saying is there's there's a negative energy and a positive energy that's kind of working together mm -hmm. to what is what is say alter our physical reality. And this is what I've been saying, you know, for a long time is that we're being controlled by these Elohim. The thing about this book is it's telling us how they're actually doing it. They're using these grid patterns and these energies in order to send these these vibrations, for lack of a better word, that's controlling us, making us doing stuff. And it would actually be the principalities and the powers, right? Yeah, so what it's saying is that they're not necessarily um, what I would have thought of like the um, devil sitting on your shoulder mm -hmm. and, you know, causing you to do things. But what this verse is saying is that that they're actually um, vibrations that's going back and forth. Energies. Yeah, energies. And they're... Biorhythm. It's what is causing us to uh, behave um, or do certain things. Certain yeah, things and then, too. well, and then on a bigger picture, then it's, we think of have the pole shift and how humanity will change when we have this shift in our geoelectromagnetic field. Well, I guess we're learning here how and why. Right. He even talking when, he, he's not giving specifics, but up, uh, earlier he said that it's, when we have the alignment of Pleiades. Mm -hmm. This greater reality uses A-line and B-line solar radiation fields to create the vertical and horizontal energy cube around the Earth's rotational field. And if you guys understand, you know, some of this that we're not understanding or not talking about, please join us in the comment section as we continue this study. The Brotherhood of Light uses these 12 grids or vortex jaw 
to enable them to come into the earth's biosphere and build a great civilization to help the consciousness of man understand his divine origin. In other words, this is how they're coming down. And so when you look at these clothes, these are going to be in certain places of the world that's really important, like uh, Mount Hor, Mount Sinai, the Temple Mount could be listed on there. Um, Altea America could be one of these points and these grid points. Like these time warp areas are where it's easiest for them to come up and down. Yeah, exactly. And the world knows this. I wish I could um, think of the, the mountain that the fallen angels came down onto because they actually have a military base on that mountain mm -hmm. by itself, sitting by its lonely, as if they're waiting for them to come down again and they want to be the first ones to report out that, you know. It's happening again. That they're back. <laughs> or to capture, you know, as if they think they can. Yeah, the um, angels. Yeah. So this would be one of the places um, that these, um, well, one of the areas that this would be, would be like when the angel came down um, and wrestled with Jacob. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and that, we that, know that to be uh, the same place. Mount, that, Mount, yeah, Mount, Mount Moriah. Right? Mount Moriah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, same, same place as the temple, man. Yeah, same place as the temple. That's where the, um, the, Dome of the Rock is. Right. And from what I understand, that rock that the dome sits on is the same rock that Jacob laid his head on to sleep when he had his dream. All right, so let's jump down to verse 46 as it continues talking about Pleiades. The 12 artificial time warp islands of light will be formed out of the oceans and seas as great interlocking circles connected with the polar areas. Now, it's talking about that map that we just saw, but it's also talking about this one that we would recognize as the dove. All right. Verse 47 says, The harmonics of light will reveal the ancient lands of the Nephites in the Americas. These will show the overlap where the brotherhood will land in America to gather the righteous seed. And it goes on to talk you know, a lot about this map here. But we want to talk about uh, Pleiades, like we see there in verse 50. So let's let's go on and look at uh, verse 48. They will come within the formation of a magnificent dove whose head of crystal knowledge will be over the Yucatan Peninsula, whose wings shall sweep across the danger zones of the eastern and western flank of North America, whose feet will land within the pyramidal area of the Bermuda Triangle and the ocean area near Mazalan, and whose body will gather the pearls of the communities of the righteous into the heartland of the ancient of days. So with the dove landing within, mostly within the Americas, what, what accounts for the other nations and other lands? Well, many of them, especially the most populated ones in the world, will be destroyed. Um, like the old world that you know, Jerusalem, a lot of that place would be destroyed at least for seven years. And, and around there would also suffer a, a lot of um, um, hardships over in that part of the world. Well, the scripture talks uh, about people who escape to that part of the world. It talks about how during the tribulation or before the tribulation, they will use their money in order to leave the Americas and go to a more peaceful land. Right. And what it says is that they are going to miss out on the blessings that's going to occur here in the promised land. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is the new world. They'll be stuck in the old world. Because, you know, you hear of a lot of people who are making the um, trip back to the um, land of like Ghana and Africa and um, back to the, what they would be called, the, calling the old motherland. Yeah. Uh, land of, uh, gold and silver. Um, and this is the land of milk and honey. Into all these areas around the world, technologies of light will come from the galactic command in Orion with instructions to help the Adamic race bring peace to the earth. Now, again, notice the importance of Kizil. Right. I try to remind myself of the Hebrew name. Kizil, he's talking about here, and then we see him mention uh, Kimmel in the next verse. 
people who are to be brought into these areas will be transfigured to go with the galactic seed already in the image of the Lamb given in the galactic key of the Pleiades. And so this is referring to that eye, um, which is Pleiades, if I'm not mistaken, is the eye of the ram. And it's what supposed to be the image of the lamb. And the people who are represented by this would be what we would know as the, as the lamb nation as opposed to the goat nations right. or the unclean nations, like the bears and the dragons. It is these lambs, the, the Christ seed, that's actually going to find these particular areas that he's talking about in the dove that we see here. In other words, they're going to be led there by the Elohim. And notice that that point there, I'm not sure what part of the dove that is, but what part of the map do you notice that that's the close to, Chris? That's in the Gulf of Mexico, just off the coast of Mexico. So that would be where we hear about the Altea America. Right. But anyway, that's all we wanted to cover on. That's all chapter 105 or key 105 talked about as far as Kimmel and Kizzo is concerned. The next chapter that we'll talk about is 106, but we'll do that in the next video. Okay. I think in this video, um, for me, it just brought into um, a point as to how the stars play such an important role and being connected to the Father. Mm, yeah, it's like it's communication. Right. So it's for us. We're we're three dimensional. He's at least tenth dimensional. Some say twelfth dimensional. And you know, so that's you know the steps that he has to take in order for us to even hear his voice. You can imagine. Yes. Earth got rocks. What? He said Earth has rocks. Earth has rocks. Yeah. All right, you want to say goodbye to YouTube? Yeah. All right, if you got anything out of this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And shalom. Shalom. See ya.